should be able to say that many dollars equals how many pounds? That's two. And it is. Yippee. All right. Go ahead. If you were grading this with a real heavy grade, would you care if we used like numbers that were very even and easy to just like you could see whether it worked or not rather than doing these, you know, like real deep things trying to be exact? I used one, one point two, things like that, so that I could see if it was working or not without having to figure anything. Does that make sense? You need to test it. I made up the numbers, yes. Made up what numbers? The conversion rates. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea, right? I mean, for testing it, yeah. But then, yeah. if you're going to go in and plug it in for real, you know. Right. Bust out a calculator. It's not that hard, right, <laughs> to go and do that. I'm serious, you know. I mean, is it that big of a deal to go and actually multiply something by 0. 0.63 instead of 0. 0.5? You know, if it helps you. If it helps you to get to that point where you want to do a bunch of testing, then fudge a conversion rate to, to test it, to make it an even number. That's true. But make sure you put the right one in, right? Because, right? you know, I, I kind of have a hard time saying, you know, uh, the cir circumference of a circle is, I don't know, three something times, you know, it doesn't rub me the right way. All right. How many test cases should we have? How many test cases should we have in this case? <laughs> Pardon the pun. No. Pardon me? Nine. Nine? Does anyone have a different number? I would say at least 11. Where did I get 11? <laughs> That's 9 plus 2, right? So your 9 is, is, right, is definitely in the right track. Where did I get the extra 2? If it's normal, or if you've got something Yeah, I would test the two validation cases. So I have two validations, and then I have 9 legitimate. How did I get 9? Well, the first number could be one of three possibilities. The second number could be one of three possibilities. And therefore, I would go and test that way and make sure. And you could make a little spreadsheet that said, hey, this is, you know, this is what the chart is. Go and run this and make sure that that works. All right? And I could verify it. It would be probably good to do what I did and do the conversion from one to another, then do the reverse conversion and make sure you get the same answer. That would be good for consistency reasons. All right? So I'm willing to say this works. All right? How could this be better? Or, or put differently, what bothers you about this? There's lots of the same. There's a lot of the same code. All right? Not the exact same code, but code that looks real similar. All right? There is, you know, what's the difference between this block and this block? Well, the specific currency type that we have and the actual numbers. All right? Other than that, you know, it's the same code. Anytime you see something that's the same over and over again, should be a red flag to your programming senses. All right? Something's wrong. Or if not, something's wrong, something could be better. Now, what's wrong with having multiple code? We got it to work. Room for error. Room for error, right? So in other words, let's say, for example, that I made that mistake between dollars and pounds. I have the wrong amount in. I go in here and say, one dollar equals how many pounds? 0. 0.60. Okay. 0. 0.6 pounds equals how many dollars? Point nine five blah, 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 blah. Ooh. It's bad that it's not internally consistent. Why is it not internally consistent? Well, because we've got the same code repeated. And not only just the same code, we've got the same numbers repeated. In a, in a sense, right? Because whatever this number is, it's going to be 1 over that that we multiply it by. All right, times one 
over that. So if this is 0.6a, if I, the currency rate were to change, this would be 0.6a. If this would be the, if this is 0.75, this needs to be 0.75. This needs to be 0.75. So we have very similar code, and we have values that repeat. That's plenty of room for error. All right. And in addition, think of this. Think of these two other factors. All right. See, I'm running out of time, but that's okay. We, we always have Thursday. All right. Think of these two other factors. What if I were to add another currency to this? All right. I have to repeat that all over again. What is that doing to my chance for errors? Increasing. Increasing them. All right. What is it doing for the chance of errors that maybe I would forget to put in yen in this if block? All right. So I would be able to convert everything but pounds to yen. All right. Then I got a bug in there. What if I don't add one additional currency, but I add all the world's currencies, which I don't know how many there are, but there's probably quite a few. All right? All right? Most common currencies even, you know, even if you pick the top 20 currencies. This code is a mess if you do that. Right? It'd be gigantic. It would be unwieldy, hard to change, and so on and so forth. Now, to be sure, if I was doing this for real, I'd be getting probably the currency rates from a database. But even allowing for that, that code like that's going to be a mess. All right, so this is not very maintainable. Kind of the, the more precise word for it is it's not scalable. That is, for three currencies, it works and it's not that hard. But if we increase the number of currencies, this would become a nightmare. That's one problem. Here's a second problem. What if my application needed to do currency conversion throughout the application? not just a page to do a currency converter, but I needed to do currency converter to convert the price of something, to convert the amount of shipping, to, uh, to convert, you know, I don't know, discounts. What if I need a currency converter to convert all those different things? All right. Well, we got a nice little conversion, con con currency converter page, but what about all those other purposes? Well, back to the drawing board. Rewrite this function, except instead of getting the values from a text box, get the values from the shipping cost that gets calculated some other way. All right? The point is, is this is not at all reusable. So this is awkward to maintain, all right? And this is not very reusable. I'm going to post this example up, all right? And what I would like you to do between now and then, again, it's not an assignment, but I think it's good if, you, if you're prepared and if you've at least thought about it, even if you haven't successfully come up with an answer, at least think through the issues. I'd like you to think through how we could make this A, more maintainable, or B, more reusable. All right? So that's the two, so two things where this solution falls, falls down. All right? Um, as it is now, this is an adequate solution for the problem that we are presented, right? But is it anyone's goal in life to be merely adequate? <laughs> Probably not, right? It's like you go to a football game. they got the big foam fingers. We're number one. You know, do you have, you have do they have like big, uh, you know, big someone shrugging like this and says, ah, we're adequate. Yeah, that's good enough. You know, no. We want to do, and we want to elevate your programming skills. Regardless of where you can come into at this class, we want to try to make you a little better in developing solutions like this. What does it mean when we say better? All right. Again, forgetting about the GUI for now, because that's a whole other thing and a whole other category. But what does it mean when I say a piece of code is better? It means probably three things. All right. It's easy, easy to maintain. It's reusable. Most two, in a way, are cousins of each other, right? Because one kind of leads to the other. Easy to maintain, reusable. And the last thing is it's fault tolerant. In other words, if, it's, if you have a piece of code that when something unusual happens, it doesn't flip out and blow up. All right? It, it handles.
handles errors in a graceful manner. So you have code that's easy to change, that's reusable, and is fault tolerant. That, then you can wear the foam finger that says I'm number one. All right? Then you're really doing a good job programming as opposed to just getting the job done and just being adequate. So between now and then, think about this. Think about how we could make this a little easier all right, to code. And then we'll discuss some of those things and we'll, we'll, we'll work through this. We'll rework this example to try to go beyond just this and, and to actually make uh, a better piece of code. All right, questions? All right, we'll see you over in the lab.